Welcome to the DigiXP PyCharm IDE plugin for MicroPython session. I will show how to install and use the tools developed by Digi that significantly reduce the time and effort for solution providers to add edge intelligence to their wireless IoT solutions based on the DigiXP RF module. I will show a few examples and add some code to show how the PyCharm IDE can be used in conjunction with the DigiXP plugin. First, let's talk about the installation of the tools. If you are on the DigiXP ecosystem page or any of the DigiXP product pages, module product pages, you will find links to the Digi MicroPython programming guide, which is the basic guide explaining everything around MicroPython uh, programming on the XP module. If you open the first subchapter here and go to reference mater material, you will find a link to the DigiXP PyCharm IDE plugin user guide, which is this guide that I have open here, which shows the installation and the usage of the IDE plugin itself. You can see the requirements, both hardware and software, and guidance how to install the plugin. You will have to install Python 3.6 or higher first, which you can do from python.org, and also PyCharm 2019.3 or higher, which you can do by just searching for PyCharm in your favorite search provider and using the links, the link that points to jetbrains.com slash PyCharm. Remember to install the community version of the PyCharm IDE. When that is done, you can start PyCharm, which will bring you to the welcome page where you see your projects. And then of course, in the beginning, this will be empty and also um, allows you to configure some settings and also add new plugins. And we are going to do that. We are, we are going to click plugins. If you have an older version of PyCharm, you may need to click the gear icon and then select plugins first. If you are in the plugin section, you select marketplace and you just search for XP. You will find the Digi XP plugin and you can just click install. After installation is done, just click restart IDE, which will restart the PyCharm tool. Now everything is ready to get started with the Digi XP plugin and to create MicroPython code on an XP module or gateway. We can start by clicking new Digi project which opens this dialog and we have to select if we want to start from scratch and create a, bl a blank project or if we want to import a digi sample. In this case, we will start with a digi sample. So we select that and click next. In the next window, we have to select the actual product um, we use. So it can be a gateway or a module. In my case, I have connected an XP3 RF module to my, to my PC. So I'm going to select that and I click next. And then I have to select the actual module that I'm using. In my case, it's an XP3 ZigP3, so I select this entry here. But depending on your choice, you can, on your module, you can you can choose any of the other entries. Click Next, and we get to the list of samples. We have a lot of samples available depending on the actual XP module that is that is in use and that we have selected in the in the previous step uh, for hard, for communication to hardware interfaces, uh, Bluetooth, um, power management. XP communication, RF communication, sending and receiving frames, processing frames, and so on. So there are a lot of samples available, and each sample is uh, coming with an explanation that you can access by clicking on the on the on the sample and reading the explanation in the on the right side. In this case, I want to start with the classic blinking LED sample, so I'm selecting that one from the GPIO section and click next. The next window, I have to select a location for my project and a name. I will keep all the settings as they are. Typically, the default settings are fine, and I click Create. When the project has been created, you will see the main view of the PyCharm IDE. You will see the project structure on the left side, and on the right side, you will see open files. In this case, I have a readme file and uh, the main Python file open, so I can switch between those. And you see the readme file shows more information about the sample that I selected. Um, I, can, I can see it in its actual text form or in a preview, and I can select the different views here with these icons. 
So let's look at the, the main Python file, um, which is all that is that is needed for this project in, in regards to Python code. You can see that there are some imports and you al already see here that there's a, a digi library imported being imported. You can you can see that by hovering with a mouse over the over the library name and then you see the location. It's in XB MicroPython. And there's also a standard Python library used, which you can see by hovering over the, in this case, time uh, module. And you see the, the actual code is quite easy. Um, it uses the pin function inside the machine library to um, create a LED pin. And it's toggling that um, LED pin value and sleeping one second between, between the toggles and also in between printing out some, some um, explanation text. So how to run this on the XB module? First of all, we need to select um, the, the XB module that we have. And we can do this with this selection um, dialog here on top in the top menu bar. If, if um, the tool has been started, um, no XB module has been found yet, I need to discover and select an XB device, which I can do by just clicking on this little text that comes up. When I, when, I, when I try to select an XP device. And this will open the XP device select, selector, which does a scan of the USB ports to see um, which modules are connected to the PC. In my case, I have two modules connected, one I called remote and another one, which is my coordinator of my network in this case and concentrate data concentrator, which I called master. I want to run the code on the module called remote. So I select that from the list and I click OK. The, the PyCharm plugin will detect if the module is not yet configured for MicroPython um, code execution. And this is done automatically and the user just has to click yes and the correct configuration parameters on the module will be done by the, by the tool. And as soon as that is done, you see that I have a new entry in the list here. In, in this case, my remote XP module well, the module that is called remote. Um, and I can just click on this run uh, button to actually um, deploy the code and, and run the application on the module. So I'll, I'll do that. And you can see it opens a console which shows exactly what the tool is doing, uh, flashing file, cleaning up and so on during the deploy process. And then it's running the application, which will open another console, which is the actual MicroPython console. And you can see already that my printouts are sent and visible on, on this MicroPython console. And if I quickly show you the actual development board that I'm using, you can see that the user LED, which is the white one here in the middle, is blinking each second. And you see the blue, just for reference, the blue uh, LED is the association LED, which tells the user that the device is associated to a network. And the red LED is UART um, communication, serial communication. But in our case, we can focus on the white LED, which is here in the middle, which is blinking each second um, as defined in the code. To stop that sample program, I just click the red button, stop. In this case, blinking LED, my blinking LED project, and the, the project is stopped. All the libraries and modules that are available for MicroPython code on the Digi XP module, such as the machine module or library that's coming from Digi, but, but and also uh, general Python libraries can be found in the MicroPython user guide. So if you open the MicroPython programming guide, you will find a subchapter MicroPython modules. And here are listed XP specific functions such as the machine module, but also other modules for RF communication or interfacing with the hardware interfaces of the module, as well as standard modules and functions that developers can use. So let's try another sample. I will close my project first which leads me back to the welcome page and I will do the same steps as before, importing a digi sample using the module that I have on my desk. And now selecting one of the hardware interface samples. In this case, I want to select the I2C um, sample, which uses the HTC 1, 1080 temperature sensor. 
and it happens that we have a specific development board, the USB-C based development board, that also incorporates a temperature sensor which is based on this HTC 1080 sensor. So if you have that board, you can also use this sample and it will, it will automatically use that temperature sensor which is on the board. There are two samples available for this scenario. One is accessing the I2C bus directly and the other one is using a library which is a bit more abstracted and high level. So I'm going to use this in this session. I'm going to th through the same steps again to create the project. When the project has been created, we see the familiar view again. In this case, my project name is of course different, but again, I have a readme file that I can review in detail and also the main Python file in this case, showing interaction with the I2C library that is used in this sample. And you can see it's used to generate a sensor object, which is then used to read a temperature value and also a humidity value and printing that out on the actual console of the module on the serial port. So I'm going to run that sample. On the same module. So it will basically flash the, the, the flash file system and deploy new code, which in this case reads out the temperature sensor on the development board and prints out the values. I will stop that sample again as before. And now I want to extend the sample a little bit with some more custom code. What I want to do is I want to send the temperature value to another uh, device in my network. In this case, I want to send it to the data concentrator or in the network, which is also my coordinator. To do that, I have to import the correct module and I will find that in the MicroPython programming guide. You can also uh, use the XV communication samples to find the correct code because there's a lot of document a lot of sample code in there that shows how to do data communication sending messages receiving messages and so on so you can use any of these samples as a reference but you can also check the documentation in this case i'm going to use the the xp module and i want to select the xp micropython module on the xp 3rf module because that's the module that i currently have connected to my pc and i'm the one that i'm using and you can see there are different functions defined in here transmit receive and so on so i want to send a message so i'm selecting transmit and again you can find all that also in the communication samples so the transmit uh, um, function is defined like this um, there are a lot of optional parameters in that function which you can see indicated by those square brackets. The two needed parameters are the destination and the payload. The payload I can basically define by myself and the destination can be a 16-bit, 64-bit address, a broadcast address, which will send the message to all the devices in the network, or it can also be a placeholder for the coordinator in the network. And that's what I want to do because, or that's what I want to use because I want to send the, the message to the coordinator. So I'm going to use this this uh, constant here. So I will switch to the code. And first I have to import the XP library, the XP module, of course. And you see it's grayed out yet because it's not used at this, at this point in time in the code. And further down, I will use this XP module by calling xp.transmit, as we have seen in the documentation. And remember that I need to um, define a destination and a payload. The tool helps me, of course, by uh, displaying this, this, um, this information. So the destination is the XP address coordinator and the payload should be the same that I print out on the, on the, on the serial con console. So I will make a little string here, temp sensor add a string to that to that message let's make celsius and also use the same way to round the actual temperature value as we did for the serial output 
And that's it. So let's run that modified sample now. So it's printing the values as before, but um, in our code, we have added a new line to send also the, the same data to the coordinator of the network. So let's see if the coordinator is receiving that data. I'm using our XCTU tool because it also includes a serial terminal. So I'm going to open the serial terminal on my concentrator device, which is called master. And if everything works well, we should receive packets every five seconds, which is the case. As you can see, it contains a lot of data, but also the correct payload as we defined in the code. And as the MicroPython code tells the module to sleep five seconds, this will happen every five seconds. And that's that should conclude the demonstration. As you can see, it's very easy to add edge intelligence to your IoT products using MicroPython and the XP PyCharm IDE plugin.